but there's several companies that are making them now. And they, they all pop. Mm -hmm. okay. I remember a story of one individual who came. Her husband allowed her to come. It was like the second year we had the show. And she had like a timesheet. She had to report back to him with what she was doing every day and what she was spending. And it, it was a really controlling situation. It was the only time that lady was allowed, allowed off the ranch was to come to Quilting in the Tetons. And, you know, and that kind of a story, and there were several others like that, I thought, I have to help these women blossom with their talents and their abilities and come out from under that oppressiveness. And there's nothing wrong with being a ranch wife, but there's something wrong when it's my permission to be allowed off the ranch. And she has blossomed to be quite, she, she teaches quilting. To me, the most memorable thing has been watching our participants grow into their capacity, getting the confidence to step out and start their own business. I um, mean, just in a, in a quiet way, and like we just talked with a lady you know, got the courage to start teaching. And what that does to springboard and make their family's life and their, their life and their quality of life and their whole self-esteem, that's, that's kind of why I, why I was in Home Ec in the first place or, you know, why I'm now a family consumer scientist. But, you know, to help people to live, to grow to their full potential has been, every year there's that kind of a story. And here we are 25 years in our last year and are featuring a style show from a dear friend and colleague who has, because of quilting in the Tetons, been able to take her wearable art and win just about every award you can get within the wearable art industry internationally. And she is a faculty member at the University of Wyoming. And the thing I'm really proud of is that in a small way, quilting in the Tetons has changed the paradigm amongst academia of what is creative scholarship. I know we've had several quilt shops and quilt online businesses come from individuals that have participated here at Quilting in the Tetons. We've had male and female participants. Some use it as a professional experience just to, to have the, the tactile or the high touch part balance in their life to the high tech that, or the stress that they've got. That I've discovered is why a lot of people quilt. Some people, it's just, it's same time next year, it's an opportunity for family members to get together. I've learned with the quilt show that they are like private, it's like a private art show. You see a one of a time collection that you'll only see if you come to a quilt show. We've had people charter planes to come to Jackson. I know of people that have purchased homes here because they've come to quilting in the Tetons. I know we've had an individual purchase a ranch in a neighboring county because they had come to quilting in the Tetons. So I do believe that we have had an economic effect. I know that for a fact because Dr. Tex Taylor has helped me survey our participants and we actually have done research on the spending patterns and can show the sales tax that are generated because of the dollars that are rolling around in the, the economy for the 200, 300 people that are here for the week to do that, and sometimes it's more than that. We had, um, we'd have at least that many that would come when we did the Fairfield Art Style Show that would maybe had not taken any classes. Um, they would come just to be able to see that. So I think we've done an outstanding job, and it's taken the community to make it happen, and it's taken a lot of extension colleagues to make, to make it work. And then there has been this whole cadre of local volunteers that docent the quilt show for the week that it's here. My office staff have been phenomenal in making that help. Quilting in the Tetons belongs to all of the individuals that have added their stitch to the story of this particular quilt show.